Brian, thank you so much for joining uh, today and chatting about your passion. Uh, appreciate you taking the time today. Absolutely. I'm excited to have this conversation with you today. Yeah. So we have, you know, spoken in the past and been out at the range together. But for the, for those watching, will you give me your, I don't know, minute, two minute elevator pitch about what it is that you do, your organization and, and what you're about and why? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm Brian Bedrosian and I've uh, been in Wyoming for, you know, over 20 years and I kind of wear multiple hats. Um, one is as a raptor biologist with the Teton Raptor Center and the other is the founder of uh, the Sporting Lead Free Initiative. And so, um, you know, really my goal is to advance, um, you know, conservation and protect what we have in Wyoming in our shooting sports, in our hunting practices. And really sporting lead free is a, is kind of a merge of those two main interests um, as a big hunter and angler myself, and really wanting to promote the conservation of our wild systems. Basically our approach is to just educate folks about the benefits of using lead free ammunition and tackle in the field, keeping our lead at the range, and just promoting this as a great conversation that we can have that can bring together both the shooting and hunting um, communities with the conservation communities instead of creating a divisive conversation as we often see in the media. So that's the, the ultimate goal is to just create a community of folks that understand and, and you know believe in personal choice and want to put our best foot forward as a, a hunting uh, community. Great, great. And you know, that's something that I'm, I'm so leery of is being a use one of Lenin's useful idiots, and being that person who, you know, that you, I'm thinking about the EPA ban on the the gas cans that actually pour without spilling all over you. Um, I'm sure that the <laughs> EPA had somebody who did spill on them. And they testified well, you know, it wasn't fun getting burned. And then you get this stupid law that now the manufacturers make these gas cans that you do get covered in gasoline. And that poor person was just a useful idiot. They were used for this ulterior, ulterior motive. And I don't want to be that guy. And yet I look at what it is you're doing and I don't like, I'm, I'm not able to punch holes in it. Like, I don't think you're trying to get rid of shooting. And that's what I love about your organization is it's not anti-gun. It's not anti-lead. Uh, I love that saying you said it's not anti-lead it's, it's pro copper while hunting. That makes such good sense. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, you know, I think, you know, the splashy headlines of, you know, coming to, you know, the copper movement is coming to take our guns is, you know, uh, eye catching. But, you know, when we're trying to kind of promote this groundswell of common sense, you know, both from an industry standpoint and from a conservation standpoint, it doesn't often get the notification um, that some of the other pieces do. So I appreciate taking the time to learn more. And really, you said it, it's not it's not about being anti-lead. Like I shoot lead at the range all the time because, you know, it's cost effective. There's really no downstream effects. Um, but when I'm chambering around, when I'm going elk hunting, sure, I'm going to put copper in there because I know the benefits of using that um, for wildlife. Yeah, it makes great sense. And, you know, so I was doing some math and I, I figured out that if we were, took a 219 grain bullet, lead bullet, and to get a ton of those, you would need 64,000 of them. So if you're figuring it costs you a buck a bullet uh, or so, that would be a lot of shooting. If I took those somewhere not around water, down between Pinedale and Rock Springs, way out in the desert on some hillside, and I shot all of those onto a hillside area in a day, because I, I like shooting a lot and I'm fast. Uh, if I did all of that, I put a lead, uh, a ton of lead, in a hillside, it's not like eagles aren't going to come and eat lead, right? Correct. So I think when we're talking about rifle ammo, um, for sure, you know, when it's going into the hillside, um, there's little to no risk. I think there are some challenges with um, sh shotgun areas where we're shooting a lot of lead pellets um, for skeet and whatnot in areas where we have high concentrations of birds like doves and other gallinaceous birds like, um, you know, grouse, where they're picking up all those pellets. But generally speaking, if you're going out and shooting skeet on BLM lands or Forest Service lands, and it's, you know, pretty dispersed, the risk is so is really minor. It's just those concentrated, mostly like dove hunting um, 
areas and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah, but for rifles, absolutely. You can go shoot thousands of rounds into the hillside um, and there's there's no risk. The eagles are only eating it when it's in a gut pile. Okay, okay. Um, and, so, and so that is so comforting to me as a long range shooter that, you know, I don't want to do any damage. Every time I go out on BLM, just take an afternoon and go out and shoot at a rock 1500 yards away for kicks and giggles. Um, I don't want to hurt anything. You know, I pick up a, I see a beer can laying there. I pick it up. I want the place to be better when I leave it than when I got there. It's good to know that there isn't the damage yeah. just from that. And a friend told me years ago, and I don't know any, I'm not a hunter. Uh, a friend told me though, years ago that there's some sort of a, a bird that will like scoop up gravel from the river bottom. And then they, they, have it wobble around in their gullet or something to break up seeds. Will you please correct my butchering of that <laughs> concept? But it sounds so neat. Yeah, I mean, almost all ducks, uh, waterfowl and grouse and other birds have a gizzard that they do pick up those pellets to help digest the, the vegetation that they eat. So it just kind of grinds it in. And so that's the risk. That's why, you know, waterfowl hunting and federal lands is, you know, um, steel shot, because the risk there is they're just picking up those pellets on the ground. And that's kind of what I was referring to with um, with doves as well. It's the same kind of um, pathway. So we call those grit pickers, you know, and the, you know, the risk there is the grit pickers pick it up and then the dove or the, the duck has lead poisoning and gets slowed down. The eagle or hawk comes down to feed on that and inadvertently ingest the lead that way. Um, but by far, you know, when we're talking about raptors, specifically golden eagles out here in Wyoming or bald eagles, um, you know, about 20 milligrams of lead is enough to make them sick or even to potentially kill them. And so that's just, you know, a grain of rice size. And as the, what, that's what we're talking about in the gut pile that the birds are eating, um, you know, as that bullet mushrooms, whatever, 80% weight retention, it's that 20% that's a dust cloud in the lead, in the, um, of lead in the gut pile. And that's what the eagles are feeding on. Yeah, that is so neat. And I'm actually going to, uh, run a video over our awesome looking faces right now, uh, just showing uh, from one of the videos you did the difference in the the gelatin uh, with the copper bullet and the the lead bullet. It, it seems to me like there's there's no argument unless you want a good bit more lead in your system. And I'm thinking not gut pile here, I'm thinking what you're eating, unless yeah. you have your salt shaker and pepper shaker and your lead shaker, and you're adding some to your food anyway, because you think it's good. If you're not that kind of person, if you don't have a lead shaker, <laughs> then why wouldn't you want to get every ounce of meat you can? Yeah, I I'm glad you bring up that connection with with folks in, in our families and the meat we're bringing home. You know, I hunt because I'd love to bring home clean meat to my family. And, um, you know, we also provide a service. We, we do a meat donation day for to connect hunters to our community. Um, we also help with um, the Hunters for the Hungry program and scanning all the meat that comes that is donated um, through that facility. And I personally have x-rayed about 5,000 pounds of donated game meat, which is phenomenal. Like, I am so excited that our hunting community is helping our, um, you know, non-hunting community with that awesome protein source. But unfortunately, about 20% does have lead fragments in it. So we know that if you're using lead bullets, about 20% of your ground can have lead in it. And I don't want to be alarmist. I want to be realistic. It is not going to cause lead poisoning in anybody. It's not going to send anybody to the hospital. Like it's not an alarmist thing. It's just one of those. You have an option to have cleaner meat. Let's take it. And there's less blood, blood shot and less meat loss. So that's just a bonus uh, on that aspect in my book. Yeah. And so since I'm not a hunter, I only buy target ammunition and I'm not familiar with pricing and I don't want to put you on the spot. I know you're not an ammo dealer, but you're a hunter. Um, can you give me an idea if I go down to the to the local store uh, and I say, just give me some good hunting ammo that expands well and it's lead. What's that price compared to uh, solid copper? I'm glad you bring up that kind of price comparison, Shepard, because it's it's a point that a lot of people talk about, um, but has changed dramatically as availability and the technology of our ammunition has changed in the past 15 years, too. Just like everything, as you know, there's good ammo and there's bad ammo. And 
you know, cheap ammo isn't necessarily good. Um, you want to have good performing ammunition. And so generally speaking for hunting calibers, if you were going to go buy not the bottom of the barrel, but a decent round, you're going to spend the same price, if not a little bit more for lead than you would for copper now. Huh. That, was, that was not the case 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was almost twice as much for copper, but because of availability in all the manufacturers having non-lead lines, yeah, it's a, it's Interesting. Directly, directly comparable, if not cheaper, to your good ammunition lines. Um, wow. It'll be maybe a little bit more if you're buying, you know, some core lock or, you know, your kind of your base, but, you know, theoretically, I wouldn't want to be hunting with that anyways, because I want the decent, you know, the only thing that's touching the animal, I want to make sure that's the the good piece of performance that I have, not necessarily my soft shell. Right. Well, and as a target shooter, I'm going to claim ignorance again here. All I care about as far as terminal ballistics go is I want to hear a ding when it hits my metal target. And when you're shooting a, a mammal, you want to create a, a ton of damage. Um, or at, at least enough that if the shot isn't exactly perfect, it's enough that it does do the job. Um, how does copper with modern technology, how does it perform to a, a really good top shelf lead included bullet? Are they same or is it better or is it slightly worse or how does that compare? Well, on the performance side, um, like everything, it's a little bit nuanced. Uh, and as a distance shooter like you are, I think there's a lot to be said in how far your shot is when you're hunting. You know, to be frank, I think if you're a long distance shooter for hunting, um, the performance of copper may not be what you want it to be because it's going to be slower at that further distance. It may not have the expansion post, you know, 500, 600 yards away, um, which is also another reason why bands aren't good because the the, the ballistics for long range shooters for um, rimfire ammunition isn't quite there yet for a full on, you know, everybody needs to use it. So let's just be realistic and know that there's limitations to every tool that's out there. Um, but generally speaking, if you're going to shoot uh, a big game animal at 400 yards or less, the performance is going to be outstanding. Um, it's going to be, you're not going to notice a difference. It's all about shot placement, but um, the knockdown power is actually a little bit better than copper than uh, lead because copper doesn't lose that mass. And, you know, if we go back to our high school physics class, force equals mass times acceleration. So if you've got the same acceleration and you've got that you're holding that mass, your force is going to be greater for that knockdown power. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of long range hunting, I'm opposed to it. I'm going to be politically incorrect here and, and I'm going to tick off a bunch of long range hunters. Uh, but yeah, I, and I know this is a complete side note and it's not what we're talking about, but I definitely wouldn't encourage anybody to go big game hunting beyond 400 yards. Uh, you know, I go over to Rexburg sometimes and compete with these, uh, these excellent shooters there and we're shooting unknown distances from a uh, hundred yards out to 1500 yards. And these guys are incredible. They outshoot me. I'm, I'm never even middle of the pack. These guys are incredible. And I listen to them between shots and, and they're, oh yeah, I would never take a shot at an elk beyond 300, maybe 400 yards. Um, I'm just not good enough shooter. And I'm thinking these are some of the best shooters around and uh, the, the risk of just injuring something and having to track it or yeah, just causing it a bunch of heartburn or headache or whatever. Like that's, yeah, I, I don't think that's a, I don't think lives are something to play with, even though they're critters that we're harvesting, they can do it in a nice moral ethical way. So yeah, I just wanted to make clear, I was not encouraging anybody <laughs> to go long range hunting. Well, um, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. I have a similar philosophy. I, I, you know, think of it as the fair chase philosophy. And I think anything, you know, after that 400 yards isn't necessarily fair chase either. Um, you know, if the animal doesn't even know you are in the area or could know it, then I think that kind of falls outside that realm. And, and frankly, as a as a personal note, like I'm right in that ballpark of I don't think anybody should be shooting more than 350, 400 yards max. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another uh, thing that I just I love about what you're doing and your slogan is uh, education, not legislation. And I look at laws. Uh, from a, you know, kind of a political philosophy standpoint, a law is basically a threat of violence. 
um, if you do this thing, the government says, then we are going to use this kind of violence from you by taking money from you or putting you in a cage or whatever. I hate laws. I hate governments making laws. I just, I like the rugged Wyoming individual uh, attitude. And I love that you guys aren't pushing anything in the legislature to make uh, laws about this. You're just saying, hey, y'all, you want to be cool? And everybody says, yeah, it kind of does make sense to be cool. And yeah, it's going to be a few years until everybody's doing it. But uh, thank you, by the way, for not encouraging my neighbors, the politicians, to come after me and use force if I make a stupid choice. I appreciate that. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, as you mentioned, our philosophy is education, not legislation. I think nobody wants to be told what to do. In this instance, nobody needs to be told what to do. Hunters, shooters, we are conservationists. We love being out in the woods and out in the wild because it's amazing. And like, I think just making that connection and just taking taking that piece of the equation out will get people on more on board. The, the minute, you know, frankly, I don't want to be told what to do either, you know, and um, I'm going to make ethical choices. And I think I trust that, you know, everybody else that's out there hunting will as well. And, and granted, there's some bad apples, but that will happen regardless. Um, but I think the more people understand why, and the more people understand, um, you know, that this isn't about laws and regulations, that's the important thing for me, because it just doesn't work. A, you know, the data show that, you know, the California ban is has low compliance because nobody wants to be told what to do. They went way too far with their distribution too. You can't even buy ammunition online uh, in California, which I think is, you know, absolutely ridiculous. Um, but you know, I think I, I'm a, I'm more of a carrot than a stick kind of guy on all fronts. Yeah, I like that. Now, the only hunting that I have done thus far ha has been uh, on our ranch. Uh, we have our driveway destroyers called chiselers, um, or for my friends and family members in Utah, uh, pot guts. Uh, if I'm shooting those with a 22, I have never seen, we have lots of raptors around. I've never seen them swoop down into our yard and pick up a dead chiseler carcass and fly away. Um, and I don't know the terminal ballistics. If the bullet is passing right through, do you recommend that when shooting little varmints like that, or if somebody's going out groundhog shooting in South Dakota or whatever, that they use lead free there as well? Yeah. So on the varmint aspect, I've actually done uh, some personal studies with golden eagles and ferruginous hawks out in uh, northeastern Wyoming, Powder River Basin, Thunder Basin, National Grasslands area. So in those kind of open landscapes, um, and I'm not sure kind of what the ranch looks like where, where you're at, but there is, it is like a dinner bell for a lot of raptors of, you know, as they're hearing the shots, they're going to come over and, and, and pick up those shot prairie dogs and ground squirrels and whatnot. Um, and I've taken a bunch in, I've x-rayed them, I've actually digested them and pulled the little lead fragments out and matched the lead isotope ratios from within the prairie dogs to the nestling hawks and eagles in the area. So it does transfer um, the, the 22s and the you know, 17s, they, they will fragment just like the big game rifle bullets do. Um, the challenge, the, the bigger issue is just like humans, if young developing brains eat lead, there's much a higher, a much higher risk of the developmental issues, behavioral issues down the road. Um, so it's actually, while it's less lead that's on the landscape, it could be a higher risk because it's going to the nestling eagles instead of the adult eagles during the winter. So what I recommend is, you know, I've used a lot of the non-lead 22s. Yeah, it's okay. They are, those are way more expensive. Um, so generally what I recommend is, you know, maybe just pick them up, you know, the ones that okay. don't go back down in the hole, you know, those are going to get eaten by their friends, which is a whole nother gross can of worms. But, um, you know, if you just got a, a bag and just can pick a few up, I think that's, that, that's a, that's a great solution, um, and maintaining kind of the status quo on what people need to do on their ranches. Okay. That sounds good. Or I guess you just step up in, in caliber or uh, muzzle velocity so that we know it's going to exit and uh, not leave something there. I would imagine a 223 or something going through a chiseler uh, isn't going to leave as much lead because it just zips right through a solid core or something. Uh, it, 
Yeah, it'll leave less. Um, it'll still leave some like 17 HMRs will definitely leave a lot. Um, I, I've done, I only looked at a couple 223, so I don't have that much data. Um, but yeah, anytime you've got a lead core, it's going to have some fragmentation, but I think it's all a, a degree, right? If you can make steps that make something better, it's great. That much better than doing nothing. And I uh, will advocate for that every single time. Yep. And dose makes poison and yeah, that, it's, it's an easy enough thing to, uh, to not do. So, Brian, what haven't I asked you today that I should have? That's a good question. Um, I think, you know, one of the things I like to just showcase is that, you know, especially from the hunting community, you know, there are, we are in the minority of Americans, right? The most Americans don't hunt, but most Americans support hunting. And I think this is an opportunity for us also to put our best foot forward and say, hey, yes, we recognize this as an issue. The science is conclusive that eagles do ingest lead from hunting sources. And we're taking steps within our community to solve it, as opposed to ignoring it or pretending like it doesn't exist. I think that kind of proactive um, approach will help maintain our support from the non-hunting public, which is important for me because you know, we, we want to maintain hunting. We want to maintain shooting for the next generations. And so, you know, reaching that and, you know, teaching, it's it's easier to, uh, you know, go out hunting. I, my kids are seven and eight. I, they were at the range with me the other day and they, they start off knowing that we shoot non-lead when we're in the field. And so like, you know, we're not going to solve this tomorrow. This is, right. it's fine. That's okay. But if we can take steps in that right direction, and when you're teaching the young next generation, let's just start them off with this message. So it's not a conversation point. And we just, it's a normal thing that we all kind of uh, do and get behind, you know, as the years progress. Building that community of folks to showcase that there is support for this is really important. So we have memberships um, and then we have um, ambassadors across almost all the states now. And then we have conservation partners for organizations. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Thank you, Brian. And by the way, if anyone watching this thinks that I am being a useful idiot, that Brian has this master plan, he's, uh, was it which finger is it, Mr. Evil or whatever. If he has this big master plan to hurt, hurt hunting, hurt shooters, et cetera, et cetera, please write in the comments below a logical, rational, well put together argument, and we will check into it. I will either, I'll do my research and then confront Brian on it in a future episode, or um, just ask him and you know, we'll work it out somehow. But I want to know as many true things as possible, and I want to not believe as many untrue things as possible. And in my search for truth, what I have seen so far, I'm believing Brian, I'm thinking this is a good idea. Uh, lead at the range and out long range target shooting. And when you are hunting critters, non-lead makes good sense. Thank you, Brian. Great. Thanks you, Shepard. I appreciate the conversation and uh, yeah, I 